Hi, welcome along to another video. As always, in the information section are links to everything that is shown. Got a few updates for you this week, but we'll start with a book that has just landed on the anti-weather modification news desk. It's 53 years old, roughly, from 1968-69. It's called Weather Modification, Science and Public Policy by Robert G. Flegel. So I can't actually find a publication date of this, but it's around 1968. It says in the preface, the papers included in this volume on weather modification were presented during the 1966-1967 academic year to the Natural Resources Public Policy Seminar, organized under the Graduate School of Public Affairs of the University of Washington. So just to have a quick look at the contents, starts with the background and present status of weather modification as per 1966-67, the scientific basis, techniques and results of cloud modification, evaluation of weather modification field tests, ecology and weather modification, weather modification, when should we do it and how far should we go, weather modification and the law, implications for public policy. So take a bit of a further look into the book as time allows and i get back to you on that one. It's another book out there that you can go and look for. So we've got an update about the Paris seminar that took place on May the 18th. I contacted Dr. Muller, Ina, and asked if there was a, a recording of the seminar available online. Unfortunately, there isn't. But she did say to me that it's similar to the presentation she gave in November last year and I covered this in November last year or sorry this was from October last year covered it in November the 14th or something last year that edition of the International Weather Wars videos and I have I have also asked Ina a couple of questions in response to her email I have just received a reply quite a nice reply very interesting I've also had an update from the Democratic Party of Luxembourg Ask for the full translation of um, the parliamentary question and the question they have asked of the Minister of the Environment, Climate and Sustainable Development is what is the government's position on this subject? Geoengineering then obviously. What efforts is Luxembourg making in order to achieve an international ban on the use of geoengineering techniques? What is the state of discussions on this subject at the international level? And as mentioned in the last video, it's really worth noting the terminology there of the second point. What efforts is Luxembourg making in order to achieve an international ban? It's an international ban. This is so what we want, what we ask for. And this is being discussed in the Luxembourg Parliament. What's happening to achieve that ban? So they're expecting an answer from the minister within one month of asking. So we're looking at about three weeks away now till we get an answer. They have offered to send me a copy of that answer when it comes in. I have, of course, accepted that offer. So we see what the Democratic Party of Luxembourg have to find out. What brilliant effort. Over to the Stanford Very Low Frequency Group and the Demeter observations of an intense upgoing column of extreme low frequency, very low frequency radiation excited by the HARP high frequency heater. This paper was published in 2008, 13 years ago. We'll take a quick look at the first paragraph from the paper and also a quick look at the tag that goes along with this paper that is ionosphere active experiments. So the Demeter is a French microsatellite mission. It involves the measurement of electromagnetic waves and their effects caused by earthquakes and volcanic eruptions or resulting from human activities. Power lines, very low frequency, high frequency broadcasting. So back to the paper. Demeter observations of an intense upgoing column of extreme low frequency, very low frequency radiation excited by the HARP high frequency heater. Pick out two pieces here from the introduction. It says Demeter spacecraft observations of extreme low frequency signals generated 
by the recently upgraded High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, HARP. High Frequency Facility 3.6 MW reveal three distinctive regions characterizing upgoing extreme low frequency waves. For those of you that don't know where they're speaking of that being an upgrade to 3.6 megawatts it has since been upgraded to 1 gigawatt. Please bear that in mind. And then this next sentence, the observed intense columnar radiation is consistent with predictions of a recent full wave model of ELF radiation from high frequency heater produced ionospheric source currents. What does that mean? It means in the indoor laboratory there was modelling done then once it was done in the outdoor lab laboratory using the HARP facility in Kokona, Alaska which is an ionospheric heater but in the outside laboratory that's where we all live. Do you remember being asked if that was okay by you? So over to the TAG ionosphere active experiments that went along with the paper. There's a paper called the Magnetic Zenith Enhancement of High Frequency Radio Induced Air Glow Production at HARP. And there are a lot of papers there. Click on the link, take your pick. Over to the United Arab Emirates. And to recap there, the cloud seeding in UAE, heavy rains, hail in some areas. So it's from the 24th of May. And they issued a code yellow alert for rains and sandstorms in some parts of the country. Code yellow means residents must be on the lookout when they go for outdoor activities. So the leaders of the country are modifying the weather. The public need to be on the lookout when they go outside. Makes sense, doesn't it? A few months ago, covered a story also from the UAE where they had received about 200 proposals from about 47 different countries for research areas around weather modification that will probably lead to them receiving funding. This has now been narrowed down to nine, a short list of nine applications. No doubt we'll get the results of that soon. There's a nice picture of a weather modification plane to accompany the story. Continuing in the UAE, I mentioned a while back about the UAE trying to develop an airborne harp facility along with a university from the UK. So the story is doing the rounds again already in the Middle East edition of CNN on Microsoft News, the CNN article, and also on 7 News Australia, which brings us to a patent from 2011, 10 years ago. Apparatus and related methods for weather modification by electrical processes in the atmosphere. Hmm, how about that? Over to NPR, which we'll presume is National Public Radio. There's a podcast, Who Should Control the Earth's Thermostat? Now if you do listen to that, there's a forewarning probably of about what level of debate it's going to be where it says below, for now, the technologies are largely theoretical. So that's very debatable. And a lot of you will be sure that that's an incorrect statement. Switzerland. There seems to be a job available for a postdoctorate position on ground-based remote sensing observations of targeted cloud seeding. This news wouldn't be this news without a quick mention to Bill Gates in India's Economic Times. Bill Gates, Harvard University, back solar geoengineering to fight global warming. Aim to dim the sun. Now, just mentioning that one because of the obvious statements from January, February, where Bill Gates was very denying it was about dimming the sun. Although since Scopex has been cancelled, it's interesting to see that article going around now. Colorado, America. From May the 22nd, the author in the headline says it was a weak but still satisfying ski season. It's maybe not what they might expect, what with all the weather modification going on there, but still a satisfying ski season. So it was okay. It did the job. Which then answers the question from the article for the same resort, ski resort, from November last year, 2020. Vale Resort's cancellation of cloud seed in this winter could mean less water in streams. Move comes as bad news for skiers. 
but as we've just found out, May 2021, it's been announced that, yeah, okay, it wasn't the strongest of snowpack, best season, but it was satisfying. So Colorado have got the answer to their questions there, that it could be bad news for skiers. It wasn't. So there's no need to do the cloud seeding anymore, is it? Well done, Colorado. Okay, so that was a gathering up of the information and a little bit of historical stuff. I'll keep you updated with what comes in in the next video. Look after yourselves. If you've got some blue skies and sunshine, enjoy them. See you next time.